of the Future, a show where students can hear directly from Ismailis at the leading edge of their fields about how to most effectively prepare for the future of work. My name is Amika Qureshi. I'm a member of the Ismailis Global Youth Team, and I'm also a student. I'm so excited to be hosting today's episode. Today, we'll be looking back at our previous interviews to see what we've learned so far about what the future of work is like and how we as students can prepare for it. Let's take a look back at our previous episodes. We started the series with an episode called The Future of Work that contextualized how technological and societal shifts will impact our future jobs. Our next episodes then took a deep dive into the fields of public service, user experience, entrepreneurship, fintech, education, and finance and technology to learn from industry experts about how their fields are changing. If you missed one of these interviews, don't worry. You can watch any of these episodes anytime by using the Ismaili TV's on-demand feature. Now, let's look back at some of the key learnings we've gotten so far from the series. In our first episode, Zabin Hirji discussed three trends that are driving the future of work. Let's take a look at what she had to say. So the way I think about the macro trends, three trends, technology, demographics, and changing social expectations. So technology is what comes to mind to everyone when we talk about the future of work with AI, automation, really uh, being very pervasive now. Every business, every industry is, is bringing that into their organizations. And really the way I think about that is the fusion of human and machine, how humans and machine collaborate and work together. And clearly that has many implications for work, which uh, we'll get into as we continue our conversation. The second uh, trend is demographics, and that's perhaps not talked about as much. And here I'll touch on three things. Uh, the first one is really the rise of the millennials and uh, the entry of Gen Z, born in 1997 onwards, into the workforce. Now, you may be wondering how we can prepare ourselves as students to take advantage of these trends. In our episode about finance and economics, Dr. Sajid Chinoy gave students a set of principles to use when approaching the future of work. Let's hear what he had to say. I think there are some principles that will transcend time. And, and, and some of those principles are A, you really, and I can't stress this enough, you really want to love what you do. And I'm going to tell every young student that don't go into a um, career because it's fashionable, because it sounds good in your resume, uh, or because you think that's your path to earning a lot of money. Because I don't think that's a sustainable way. I think you want to sample a few things, and that's where I think going to a undergraduate university where you've got uh, many different options to pursue, you can try and test and experiment over there. So I think that's really important. And secondly, even in life, if you take a job that you're not happy with, uh, um, you know, choose something else. But I think the first principle, you know, even if we talk about the future of work, which I will, is you really need to love what you do. I think the second principle is you need to be the very best you can. Uh, I'm a firm believer that uh, there's no such thing as uh, educating yourself too much. I think if you think, uh, you know, after an undergraduate degree, if an MBA is important, do that. If a master's degree is important, do that. If a post, uh, if a PhD is important, do that. Uh, if a postdoc is important, do that. But you know, give yourself the best chance in life by procuring uh, as many skills as you can. Now, I think the future of work is changing rapidly, both in terms of you know the opportunities available, but technology and automation uh, are, you know, have just transformed the way we work and. I think 2020 uh, is it was a great case in point where the world was turned upside down and uh, we all learned to be much more flexible in our ways and the people that were able to be more flexible and to adapt to different situations uh, uh, you know did very well so I would say 
you know, technology is changing the way we work. Uh, if anything, the more mundane jobs can be automa uh, automated, uh, and therefore it's even more important that the value addition that education brings to a job, that skill premium has gone up. That you really need to be doing more than what a computer can be doing. You need you need to be bringing a thought process to your job, which you will gain through education and experience. So, yes, you know things are changing in terms of technology and automation. But listen, this is not new. Uh, this has been happening since the you know beginning of time, uh, whether it's the industrial revolutions. So every few decades, technology will be disruptive. Some jobs will go away other jobs will be created and so the balance has to be you 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 be as good as what you, as you can be in what you want to do but then you also learn to be flexible to adapt when when the situation so demands once you've set some principles to take advantage of the future of work you will likely want to start gaining exposure to different opportunities and building a skill portfolio that can differentiate yourself in our episode about careers in the public service, Rihanna Schwinninger Ladak shared this advice for how to go about acquiring those skills. So you acquired them uh, already in university. So what I, as I said before, try out uh, exchange programs because they will get you exposed to other cultures, other environments, other languages. Try traineeships, um, uh, placement jobs, multiply your experience so that you get exposed to different communication styles, different ways of doing it. Um, what I also would, uh, suggest is that if you want to go in public service, you also take um, drafting skills. Those are very important. Nobody's born writing and speaking well, but you can learn how to do it. In our episode on education and technology, Rahim Hirji shared two additional pieces of advice for students as they approach the future of work. Encouraging students from all industries to get more comfortable with data science and to determine whether they want to go deep into a particular field or take a broader approach in their career. Let's see what he had to say. So, I mean, I, th I think whatever um, career you want to go into at this point in time, um, what's really critical is that you have an appreciation of data and data science. Um, and so, and I, I talk about that quite sincerely because, you know, even within, um, within education, you know, data science is really important, whether that's learning science um, or whether it's the application um, of some of that learning to be able to create a greater learning experience. So um, data science is, is really important. Um, and, and just having that appreciation. If you're not a, if you're not a coder or a developer or an engineer, um, I, I think you've just got to have an appreciation for it to, so, to do that. Um, the other thing I'd say is um, you've got to figure out uh, whether you want to go broad or you want to go deep. So in education and ed tech, um, either figure out whether you're going to go generic and then dis and then go go deeper later in your career, or if you've got a real passion then go after that. So if you are a teacher or an educator, you know, try and, try and do that teaching and educating as early as possible. You know, there's, there's lots of opportunity to teach um, you know, at, at the moment. You know, there's online tutoring that you can kind of sign up to. Lots of, there's, you know, there's, there's millions of students in, in China who want to learn, uh, learn English, and that's a great opportunity. Um, you can help within the community, and I think um, if you want to go deep and be an educator, I think that's uh, that's one of the one of the ways to kind of move forward. It's no secret that the quality of your network is an important determining factor of your career success. In our user experience episode, Asmina Karimi discussed the importance of learning from others to better yourself. Let's listen in. And then mentorship as well. So finding someone that you really admire and finding someone who really wants the best for you in that field. Um, and then also just stay open and curious and, and open to growth and, um, and finding new ways that you can apply your skills um, as well in the field. So those are the things that I would recommend to get started. 
Having mentors can be a significant benefit as you progress along your career journey. In our episode on entrepreneurship, Ali Madhavji suggested that students create their own personal board of directors. Let's listen in to what he said. Yeah, so so the good thing is, I think it's it's easier than ever now. And actually, I would almost say in certain cases, COVID's actually made it even easier because now you can access anyone sort of all over the world that's an expert. And there, I find that, you know, from our experience, it's even easier to connect with people right now during COVID um, that, you know, otherwise probably wouldn't have been available. So we are seeing that still. Um, one of the, the things that you can do is just leverage the internet, go on LinkedIn, find experts in that field, send them a, a message, tell them what you're working on, tell them you'd love, you know, for some insights in a 15 minute chat, or you'd love to send them some details over email and, and, and get their thoughts and, and advice because, you know, they have so much experience in the field. Um, and, and as you start to do that, you'll start to be able to almost create your own board of directors, which is actually really important as a concept, right? So if you think about how a company runs, right? Over time, you'll put together all these advisors, you'll start to put together, you know, your board of directors, and they're gonna help guide the success of the company. And so as an individual, like you should almost have a very similar way of approaching it, right? Like you're not gonna be successful on your own. No one one ever, you know, does it on their own. And so how do you start to create your own board of directors, your own set of advisors or mentors, and then, people that can help guide you. Your parents are, 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 are two of those, but may not share the same passions or interests and be able to help you in the way on your professional career in, in a lot of cases. But you can start to supplement and, and add in other advisors along the way that you can trust, that you can um, learn from their mistakes, their experiences to help you sort of uh, go forward you know, further and, and, and faster. And so being able to start assembling that and reaching out is, is a good way. We usually break down, by the way, mentors um, in three ways. I talk about this in, in one of my books that's focused on, uh, you know, helping students uh, in university or students going to university. And so the three ways that we sort of break it down is finding someone that, you know, shares some similar interests, um, you know, maybe a year or two ahead of you or like starting to go down some path a year or two ahead of you. So like, let's say you're a a student in in high school, grade 10, 11, 12, you might want to connect with someone who's just gone through the process, selecting universities, just started university, maybe in a program that you're interested in, right? Very valuable insights that you can learn from someone that's a couple years out. Then the next stage of mentors, is going to be someone that's, you know, five, six, seven years out. Maybe it's someone that's in fourth year applying to jobs in in university, applying to jobs or creating their own career as an entrepreneur and what that sort of process is like. Like, how are they going through that? What are they thinking about? What's going well? What's not going well? And, And being able to learn from them. Maybe they just started their career as well, right? So it could be sort of any part of that range. And then the third mentor is someone that's just much more experienced. Maybe... 15, 20 years of experience, or even anywhere from, you know, five to 25 years, 30 years of experience that can just give you, you know, things to sort of look at, things to avoid, bigger sort of macro problems and ways to look at things. Um, and that sort of guidance will be really, really helpful. And and the thing is, it's it's not that hard. Most people are willing to help and, and, and share, you know, for people that they see as, as promising, people that are interested in in learning and have sort of that hunger and desire to do better. And they'll see part of themselves, you know, in you in some ways. And so it's, it's very good and important to just, you know, ask and reach out and and start building that sort of board of advisors on your own. At the end of every interview of these series, we've been asking our guests what final pieces of advice they have for us. Here is what Ayaz Mita from our FinTech episode and Moyes Awani from our design and architecture episode had to say in response. Um, as I was saying before, one is you need to really find what's your what's your space and, and what you're good at. I think that's very, very important and that will allow you to find the entry uh, pathway into that space. And I think the second one is uh, don't 
and, and that's really very much of a personal response. Uh, don't over calculate or don't over plan. Planning is important and strategizing and you know defining sort of what's your career path is important. But sometimes listening to yourself and listening to opportunities and having trust uh, and faith somehow that life is going to take you where you need to be uh, really helps as well. You know, I never planned uh, or I had mentioned that I wanted to go to Afghanistan, as I said before. I never really planned it sort of in a very uh, meticulous or systematic way. It just happened at the right time in the right place. And then things sort of uh, uh, ensued, ensued in a sense from, from that. So I would say, you know, keep a little bit of spontaneity, keep a little bit of uh, listening and, and uh, let sort of the surroundings and the world around you also speak to you and, and guide you as to, as to what your next step should be. But again, know yourself, know your skills and uh, look at the opportunities around and really find sort of the sweet spot, the place where you feel you can make a difference, the place where you think you can really personally contribute and add something and then just sort of uh, follow that path. Follow that path and it will take you and lead you to somewhere interesting without you necessarily having to worry about what the next step after that and what the next subsequent steps are going to be. But just sort of let yourself be, uh, you know, there's a very nice quote by Rumi, I think that says, let yourself be pulled by what you really love. And I would say that's probably one of the best secrets I can share today. Yeah, I do. Um, I think the first thing that I would say is do what you love. You know, we only get one shot at life. And for me, my passion was uh, or is design and architecture. And I think that um, I think when you start to find the things that excite you, the things that you are interested in, your intuition kind of tells you that, hey, there's something interesting here for me. Go for it, you know, and turn that turn that like into a love if it enables you to do that. I don't think it's smart for people to work on things that they don't enjoy. I just think life's too short and, and that, that's also, um, that, that would be number one. The second thing I would say is enhance your peer group with as much diversity as possible, right? So where you have, um, where you have a peer group which is pretty monolithic, i.e. everyone's more or less the same, they come from the same background, they live in the same place, I think that will limit, I think that could limit you in the future. So I think that it's far more interesting to have a, or establish a peer group that is made up of more diversity um, because it just creates, it will inform you, it will, it will um, widen your worldview, which again is something that, that, that I have found to be very, uh, very important for, for my career uh, and also for my life to be more, more exact. And then the third thing that I would say is your career is not everything. You know, don't make the mistake of, um, of course it's important. You know, we spend most of our lived hours working on our careers. But at the same time, your career is not the only thing that defines you. Um, and actually the things that will ultimately define you are the values that you live by. Uh, and that can, man that should manifest in your career in my view, but it's, it's kind of beyond your career. It's more important than your career. So I think when you're thinking about your career decisions, when you're thinking about, you know, these kinds of, you know, how you see yourself in the future of the world, um, try and think about that in terms of the kind of person that you want to be, you know, the kind of values that you want to have rather than the specific career idea that you have. And then the final thing is don't get too hung up, in my view, don't get too hung up on um, making everything click into place so early on. You know, use the early days of your career to kind of really experiment, really have fun with it, really enjoy it. Um, get as much from, from it as possible and give as much to it as you can. Um, and it will kind of make sense the older you get. It may not make sense in your 20s, it probably won't. But by the time you get to your 40s and you look back and it will make much more sense and have faith in that. If you or any of your friends or family members are interested in delving deeper into any of these interviews, you can watch the past episodes at any time by using the Ismaili TV's on-demand feature. Season 2 of Careers of the Future will feature more in-depth conversations with Ismailis at the leading edge of their industries. Be sure to stay tuned to the Ismaili for interviews with leaders in fields, ranging from film to management consulting to business and technology 
to climate change and sustainability. Thank you so much for joining us today for this review of what we've learned so far. And ya alim badat.